that I have attached a mask to, and of course I will deflect it ever so slightly so that it goes into close to simple harmonic motion. It's really not simple harmonic motion. Why? Because it's energy is not conserved, but for a short period of time it'll be close enough and we should be able to get a pretty accurate period for how long it takes for that thing to go back and forth. So, let's um, rotate this to the side. So to rotate it to the side, I'm just going to, uh, I guess I could have left it there. So that was 0.5. Let's draw this thing rotated now off to the side a little bit. A little dramatic, but you get the idea. So there's our point five. So we have rotated it through some sort of theta. And I want you to come up with um, an expression for the period, which means we have to find what? Omega, right? All right. So again, we can make this, you know, we could try to simplify it a little bit. Um, we can make it a little more complicated. We can do whatever you want. Um, if we were going to draw a force diagram for this in this position, what would we draw? Gravity. Gravity. How many? Well, we could draw one gravity at the center of mass of the entire thing. Is that in the middle of it somewhere? Oh, well, it's oh, not going to be. It won't be dead center, why not? It would be lower. So we have two options here. We can draw one gravity at the center of mass and put all of the mass at that, you know, all of the FG at that point. But then we have to calculate the center of mass, which is not a big deal. We can do it. Or we can draw two gravities. This Because we know where the center of mass is of the ring, right? Where's the center of mass of the ring? Dead center. And we're going to assume this mass is like a point mass, so its center of mass is going to be right where it is. So it actually works out easier if you treat the two gravities separately so then you don't have to calculate the center of mass. Not that you couldn't do it that way, but you could. Um, so I'm going to draw one gravity right here for the FG of the ring and one right here for the FG of the um, mass. All right, right you are. You know, write Newton's second law in rotational form. Write down what you're going to put in there. We can do it all in variables and then plug in the numbers uh, after that. So tell me what you're going to write for your net torque equals I alpha. Or do you just want to try it on your own? And then... uh, no. So what do we get here? Chocolate, too. I'll trade you. Oh, you want a piece of chocolate? Chocolate is my love. My love, too. Oh, you could keep the gum. <laughs> Fair trade. Thank you. What's contributing torque to this thing when we pull it back? Gravity. Gravity from the ring and gravity from the mass. So we have the radius of the ring multiplied by, well, we'll say the FG of the, the FG of the ring. Gotta be consistent with my variable, right? Plus. Actually, these are all minus because they're restoring torques, and once again, I keep forgetting to do that. The radius of the mass and the FG of the mass equals the I, the I about what? Center of mass. Not the center of mass, but the? Fraction. 
So, so pivot point, right? So we're going to have to calculate that. So we're not going to be able to get about, uh, you know, away from that. Multiplied by alpha. Oh, we forgot our sine things, didn't we? Ay, ay, ay. No, let's erase. Minus the radius of the ring times the gravity of the ring times the sine of theta minus the radius of the mass times the gravity of the mass times the sine of theta equals I about the pivot point or the axle, whatever you want to call it, alpha. All right. Whew, okay, so we can put in some numbers. What is the radius of the ring? I gave that to you here. So that's point 0.2, right? Minus point 0.2. What is the gravitational force from the ring? We have the point 0.226 for the mass, right? Mm -hmm. Multiplied by? We'll do 9.8 since we're actually, you know, usually I use 10, but since we're actually trying to predict, we'll go with 9.8. And what are we going to do with the sine on the sine of theta? Take out the sign. We're going to take it out because we know we're going to just do a very small little angle. So we're going to have our theta. All right, what's the radius for the mass? The r, the distance from the pivot to where the mass is? Is it the diameter? It's the diameter, which would be 0.4. And again, we're making some approximations. Would you, could you argue that really you should go to the center of mass of this thing and maybe it's a little less than 0.4? Sure, but we're just trying to get a rough approximation. So we have the mass of the mass, which is 0.5, multiplied by 9.8. And again, we're going to get rid of the sine, which is theta. And now we have to calculate the I about the pivot point. Who remembers how we're going to do that? How do we calculate the I for this crazy looking thing? Isn't it a hollow cylinder? It's a hollow ring, yeah. Ring. And a point mass. So to calculate the I, you can always add up all the individual I's if you know them. And we know that this happens to be made up of the I of the ring plus the I of the mass. Tell me about the I of the ring. Where is your formula sheet? That's a cylinder. That's a sphere. It's just mr squared. But can we use mr squared here? All of those things on the formula sheet that you're thinking about assumes the object rotates around what? Its center of mass. Are we rotating this ring about its center of mass? So what do we have to use when we shift the, the axis? axis? The parallel axis theorem. Yay. Right? So what are we going to do to find the eye of the ring? It's going to just be the eye about the center of mass plus md squared, right? That's the parallel axis theorem. Sound good? Yeah. So that gives me the eye about the center of mass is the mass of the ring times the radius of the ring squared plus the mass of the ring. And what is D in this case? How much have we shifted from the center of mass to this point? point two. The radius again, right? So we end up with the radius of the ring all squared. So that's going to be 2 times 0.226 times 0.2 all squared. All right, what about the eye of the mass? What are we going to treat it as? Can you see it? Did I go okay. too low? <laughs> no. Well, the ring is. Time to jump. Oh, myself in the How are we going to figure out the eye about this mass? What are we going to no, treat it as? Point mass. We're going to just treat it as point mass, right? The eye of the mass is just going to be the m of the mass times the r of the mass squared. So that's going to be 0.5 multiplied by 0.4 squared. Mm -hmm. All right, so add all that up, and what does our total I come out to be? I need my calculator. There's too many numbers there. So we have 2 times. All right, we'll 
see if you guys get the same thing. predict something here. All right, so again, if we want to find the period, we have to find the omega. How do we find the omega again? Uh, well, we could replace alpha with what? Let's replace the alpha, right, with the d squared theta over dt squared. And the omega is whatever shows up in front of the theta sign, right, when we kind of bring everything together. That's going to be the omega squared. So let's do that. So let's combine these two things. So we get 0 0.2 times 0.226 times 9.8 plus 0.4 times 0.5. So I get minus 2.4 theta equals 0.09808 d squared theta over dt squared. So if I bring the d squared theta over dt squared and divide by all of this, I get... You should be able to do that in your head. Yeah. <laughs> but it came up being actually a very nice number. 24.5. Oh, nice. Theta equals zero. Look at that. I would not have anticipated that. I would have thought I would have had some ugly, irrational thing going on. All right, so what does this tell me? That 24.5 is... 24.5 is what? The omega. The omega squared. So how am I going to use that to find the period? You do... We do omega equals... Omega. Omega equals what? 2 pi... Over t, so now we have 24.5 equals 2 pi over t. So what does the period of this thing come out to be? And hopefully we didn't make any mistakes. Oh yes, thank you. Square root. So 2 pi divided by the square root of 24.5. That's what I get. Roughly that. Anybody else get that? Why is it a number this time? Oh, because, because we didn't do variables. We actually okay. did a whole problem. So, um, again, last time we just kept this all in terms of variables. Um, this time we actually put in numbers just so we could see if all this stuff actually works out in real life. All right, stopwatch. I think I brought one. Oh, there it is. Anybody want to be the official timer? Oh, you know, you've got the same one. All right, give a couple of stopwatches out. So I'm going to put this into simple harmonic motion because I'm only going to deflect it a little bit. And I want you to time five oscillations. And by an oscillation, it's there and back. So it has to come back to where it started. So it's one, two, three. Three. So you time, you know, you decide when to start and when to stop and tell me, you know, what you get after you do, do five of them. All right, so anytime you feel like it, time them, time away. I should do it as well. It's a wobbling a little, that disturbs me. This should be about right. What? Awesome. I got 6.31 seconds for five of them. Oh, damn, we're good. What'd you guys get? I did. I got 12.83 for 10, ten of them. And I got 1.2. Right. So I got 6.31 for 10. So when I did this, I found out that my answer, if you divided that by five, I got 1.262. 
U got 1.28. So you can see we have accurately predicted the period of this funky looking shape by just working with the ideas of simple harmonic motion. Not bad, right? So I started it went like right after you started. Uh huh. The angle was a little bit more extreme. Yeah. And I got 1.20. Is that probably why? Um, it may be. It may be also just, you know, start and stop errors. I'm sure if we took all, you know, six of us and averaged them, you know, we'd still be pretty close. So, you know, you can try it again if you want. Oh, it's okay. So, all right. Not bad. So, again, just showing you that, again, whatever comes up in front of this term is your omega squared. You can use that then to predict periods and so on and so forth. All right. Let's take a look at oscillations. On the AP exam, all right. So these are some AP problems, some multiple choice from actual. 